So I'm not a huge fan of running, but sprints are definitely the way to go. If you want to keep running poles, throw harder, you can do that. What's up guys, welcome to today's video. I made a McIntyre if you're new to the channel. It's a good time to jump in if you've been watching. Um, I'm really excited to bring this new vlog series. This is episode number one in the vlog series of Road to 97 miles per hour, and I'm pretty fired up about it. Um, it's a little early in the morning, haven't had any coffee yet. I will be bringing you guys to a new driveline facility in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, it is not open to the public yet, but very soon it will be. If you are a player, and you're in the West Coast, I mean Arizona in particular, and you're looking for a place to train, definitely think you should look into Driveline, Arizona. All right, so I know there's a lot of stuff about like super intensive morning routines and cold showers, and I do like a lot of that stuff. I just don't have a morning routine that has everything in it. So usually I will get up, <sighs> kind of get the day started by making sure that I'm getting my water intake, and then I like to immediately get my body moving. So I'll usually foam roll kind of early in the morning and do a little bit of like activation stretch. I'll usually do that first thing and then kind of just walk around, do chores. And then I'll usually go for about a 15, 20 minute walk. After that, I do take a cold shower. Um, I definitely think there's benefits to it. Your whole like life isn't depending on it, but I mean, give it a try. It definitely kind of sucks. So if you can get used to that, it's probably a good way to start your day. All right, so talking breakfast. Usually, I used to do fasted. I just wouldn't eat in the morning. But right now, I usually train at about 10.30 in the morning to probably about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So not doing breakfast really isn't an option because I'll just crash. So I even bring food with me to training. But for breakfast, I like to keep it really simple. I eat the same thing every single breakfast. Uh, but like for the most part, sometimes I'll mix in... Uh, pancakes on Sunday mornings. Um, but for breakfast, I do oats. For protein, I'm just using eggs for breakfast. Sometimes I'll use different, like, I'll do steak, bacon, something like that. But for the most part, I usually just do my eggs as protein. And, uh, so mainly trying to get my carbs in, get some protein in, but just make sure I have enough energy for to get to training and to get through training. So. <laughs> So this is our final breakfast of what we got. I like salsa with my eggs, vitamins, as well as coffee. And then we got our oats. I got some Chris Bumstead on the YouTube. Gonna watch the leg workout video and see if I can find any inspiration for today. Coffee, I put in um, collagen as well as a Laird Hamilton coffee creamer. The Laird Hamilton stuff is awesome. It's the only uh, like sweetener I'll put in coffee. If you watched videos before, I do eat very fast. So usually a Korea egg probably takes me about less than two minutes to eat. If you're trying to gain weight, you gotta eat faster. It's the only way you'll be able to eat as much as you need to eat if you can eat faster. Slower you eat, more miserable it's gonna be. All right, so up next, we'll be heading over to Driveline. Dean will be there today. Both have a lower body lift. I'll throw first, and we'll show you guys the new facility that is completely empty right now. Again, special, uh, you gotta know special people. And Dean Jackson is that special person for getting me into driveline early. Ay, ay. Ay, ay. Look. Baby girl love my bop and unlike me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen don't stop, they ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl love my bob and I like me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pin don't stop, they ain't gon' feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Big flex, my swole, double cup and I'm pulled up. Hating like hold up, what's the problem? I'm pulled up. Big flex, my swole. Alright, so warm up's done. Um, we're gonna have Dean kind of show the reasoning behind why I'm using a barbell in pivot picks and in rockers. 
before actually throwing the plyo. So. so whole point here, what we're doing, putting a barbell on your back, because your problems are getting the pelvis to rotate yeah. and then the torso to rotate. Mm -hmm. What you like to do is you like to do both at the same time. Yeah. But we want hips first, then torso, right? Yeah. So we're taking the arm completely out of it by using the barbell. Uh, so all you got to do is rotate the pelvis, rotate the torso, yep. no arms involved because it's just yeah. a barbell. And I'm kind of thinking about rotating back to end range, mm -hmm. dropping into it, mm -hmm. and then letting the hips start the movement back. Yeah, and then we'll go back and forth between three to five reps of the barbell, yep. three to five reps, throw a pivot pick, mm -hmm. uh, and kind then we'll go like back and variation. forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, yeah. so we're just trying to learn uh, a skill acquisition yeah. guru would be like, we're trying to learn a new skill, the normal term is just like, we're just trying to get the feel of what it feels like to do it right, and we yep. transfer that to the throw, yep. that's it. That was great. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, that looked real good. Ooh. And then you transfer that feel into throwing your pivot fix. There you go. Nice. That's really good. So you're literally just chilling here. This is counter rotating. Then you run out of room to counter rotate. Yeah. So then this going closed just closes Initiates the hips that off. movement. Yeah. yeah. And then once that's initiated, you just hold this closed while the pelvis rotates. Yeah. Yeah. See how that's different? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Feels like it's actually letting it get the arm get to end range. Mm-hmm. That bagel fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right, so bullpen's done. Uh, the next thing we're going to go into is a lower body workout day. Uh, the first thing we do for that is sprints. Currently eating a bagel. Thanks, Nicole. It's really good. But we're going to run sprints and then get to lifting. So usually we do three sprints at close to max effort, which I'm not a huge fan of running, but Sprints are definitely the way to go. If you want to keep running poles, throw harder, you can do that. But three sprints, and then we'll get into the lower body day. So on the agenda for the lower body lift today, usually we have a squat, but like a belt squat. So we're not putting a ton of weight on the shoulders. We're gonna do heavy hip thrusts, and then after hip thrusts, we have hamstring curls, uh, kickbacks, stuff like that. And some additional lower half movement for me, trying to keep the hips loose and moving well. So that's what we got. I feel like the mic's just gonna pick up a lot of like little noises and like little grunt like <laughs> Oof. 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 Wait, wait. Oof. 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 Oh yeah. Oof. 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 God. So usually we do some hamstrings. Uh, today we're gonna do some adductor work. Um, the adductors, hips, low back, all of that stuff is stuff that I'm trying to work on. I just need to do kind of extra work on it because that's where I tend to get tight and then I use my bigger muscles to kind of move. So right now we're trying to obviously break movement patterns and those are some of the bad movement patterns I'm stuck in, so. We just need to make everything uh, strong enough, you know? Because you, uh, everybody's gonna move to their strengths. So that's a problem on the uh, mechanical side of things. Like yeah. when you're actually doing the movement itself, like of the pitching motion. Uh -huh because you're just gonna move how your body is strong enough, not what's most efficient. Yeah. So if you're strong enough through certain patterns, you're just gonna- if Override, you're, you pretty yeah, much like you're just override. gonna do that uh, compared to if you were strong enough to do it right. Like yeah. you're just way stronger in the positions of doing it wrong. Yeah. So your body just does it wrong because that's where it's strong and comfortable. So yep. this is just to fill in some of those gaps and slowly bring along the uh, ability for you to move through those positions in the different structures yeah. uh, so you can hopefully move correctly. Or if you guys just watch Chapman or Garrett Cole throw enough and you just try to repeat their mechanics, <laughs> that works too. We just get told like, hey, have you seen how Garrett Cole throws? Yeah. You should do that. And I'm like, oh. yes, I should. <laughs> <sighs> 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 
So those are some of the main movements we're gonna do for today. Again, with how much work we're doing on the mound, also trying to not kill my body since we already kind of pushed it. We will try to get stronger, but it's not the number one focus as compared to trying to fix movement, so. So I'm gonna finish up with some core and then head back because I need to eat. That is about it from the gym here today. As you guys can see, it's still not fully set up, but it's getting very close. So probably for the next vlog, we'll probably be fully set up and we'll have a bunch of other people training in here. So if you're watching this and interested in training at driveline, definitely comment um, and feel free to shoot me a message asking if you think it's right pretty much for you training wise. So. All right, so that is it for today's workout and today's video. I appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the Road to 97 content that'll be coming out. I'm looking forward to it.